so nice out. I like this. It's not too hot, not too cold. Just right, sort of. <laughs> well, my plant's growing kind of crooked again. Oh well, I'll have to maybe move it and have it grow somewhere else. The thing I like about Tozer is that he lived in the times that I exist now. I mean, he saw what was coming and addressed it in very direct ways that make perfect sense. It's uh, not real complicated. The things that he said, and yet they are heavy duty, they're, they're meaty, they strike at the very heart of some of the issues that once you get beyond just being childish or fleshy or, you know, having a bad attitude or, you know, not knowing how you clean up your own act or how you should read the Bible and pray and do those normal things, then he begins to address the real heart issues of, you know, where we compromise and where we don't take literal, you know, the Word of God and apply it to ourselves. How it's easier sometimes to be religious as opposed to being relationshipful. And how sometimes it's easy to dodge the question when someone else is you're pointing at rather than someone else saying it to you. And that's what I like about Tozer is that he's very, very there, <laughs> very real, very Holy Spirit inspired. And so in Tozer today, as God is speaking to us, if we confess straight plain Bible teaching. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15.3 Lack of balance in the Christian life is often the direct consequence of overemphasis on certain favorite texts with a corresponding underemphasis on other related ones. For it is not denial only that makes a truth void, failure to emphasize it will in the long run be equally damaging. One example of this is the teaching that crops up now and again having to do with confession of sin. It goes like this, Christ died for our sins, not only for all we have committed, but for all we may yet commit for the remainder of our lives. When we accept Christ, we receive the benefit of everything he did for us in his dying and rising again. In Christ, all our current sins are forgiven beforehand. It is therefore unnecessary for us to confess our sins. In Christ, they are already forgiven, we are told. Now, this is completely wrong. <laughs> and it is all the more wrong because it is half right, technically in some way. It is written that Christ died for our sins, and again, it is written that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. 1 John 1, 9. These two texts are written of the same company of persons, namely Christians. We dare not compel the first text to invalidate the second. Both are true, and one completes the other. The meaning of the two is that since Christ died for our sins, if we confess our sins, they will be forgiven. To teach otherwise is to attempt to fly on one wing. You know, it's, it's so true because so many times people just presume that because Jesus died for all our sins, that we don't need to necessarily ask forgiveness for them because it gets confusing for some people that really are innocent of this false idea. But the innocent ones think of it this way. They go, well, how could Jesus die for our future sins? And then if he did, how can we have to confess it? Well, because technically, when a pastor tries to explain it to you, they say, well, God's trying to get you to acknowledge that he already knows that you sin because, you know, you need to figure it out that, you know, God knows so you can be in right relationship with him and do the right thing because, after all, Jesus already took care of it, the penalty. Well, that all sounds good, but the reality is, is that sin causes separation. As soon as you're separated, what happens? Let me ask you this. If you have a cell phone, what happens when your call gets disconnected? Do you have to dial again? Of course. Does it change the fact that you could dial? No. Does it change the fact that you were connected? No. Does it change the fact that the phone can get a hold of the person you're trying to speak to? No. The same thing is true of sin. 
Jesus paid for the penalty of sin, which is death. Sin works in our lives to cause us to be completely separated from God permanently and to create a spiritual death that would never allow us to come close to God to receive forgiveness. But because he died on the cross and he rose again, then we have forgiveness that we can ask God to forgive us our sins or to forgive us the separation that sin causes us when we are alienated from God that causes him to be distant from us because we have this nature that he cannot tolerate in his presence when we act according to our flesh and not according to our spirit. So, in reality, yes, in some ways your major penalty for sin is paid for. But also to restore relationship, we do confess our sins. So he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness because it's just like taking a bath. Once you get dirty, you gotta get cleaned up. And when you sin, you're getting dirty, and you gotta get cleaned up. It's pretty simple. <laughs> before you, before Jesus died on the cross for our sins, you didn't know you were dirty, so you never took a bath. Once he died, then you knew that you were dirty and you need to take a bath. So to get cleaned up, you just confess your sins. Bingo. That easy. Then. No longer are we tossed to and fro by the enemy who comes in and says, Oh, you sinner, you, you are so bad. You've done this and you've done that and yada yada. Bad boy. When in reality, we've always been bad. It's what God is doing that's good from himself living in us that causes us to confess, redress, and become in right relationship with God again, so that our Father can fill us with his love and his mercy and hug us as a child would be held by their parent. Because the first time that a child comes, a parent may pick them up, but if they keep coming muddy and dirty, eventually they're gonna put them in the water first and clean them up and then hug them. <laughs> I would rather go get cleaned up first before approaching God than to have Him clean me up. Wouldn't you? <laughs>